they don't want to set the world on fire. Welcome, everyone, to the next episode of The Foley of Man. My name is Chris, and with me here today, Robert. And we're looking at a book called Followed Equestria. Uh, from the perspective of me being a brony and him being a non-brony, and just seeing if it works, if it doesn't work, and what about it may or may not be enjoyable. This week's chapter, we are reviewing chapter 37.4, so there's two more points to follow after this. Yes, technically it's supposed to be a single chapter, but it was broken up in an audiobook format, um agreed upon by the author uh due to its length so gotcha. we're most of the way through it we should also state the book was written by kcat mm -hmm. uh and there's subsequent titles that came from it really kind of created a universe that that expanded forth from this one story so but anyways yep. let's get right into things last we left little pip and gang uh they had uh waltzed right into a trap oh no um full of uh, uh broadcasters Yes. That were slowly making their brains melt out of their heads. Yeah, not, not great. So we come to, uh, or Pip comes to, uh, in a dream that she doesn't want to wake up from because she knows how painful it is going to be. It couldn't be good. Uh, but anyways, uh, it actually isn't so bad. Pip wakes up in familiar surroundings, the medical bay of a stable, of all things. Mm -hmm. um, a very familiar sight. Oh, yeah. Uh, as we've come across several times in the story. And, of course, the first voice that little Pip is greeted with is dark and raspy. Yes. As one might expect, a 120-year-old canterlot ghoul would be. Yeah. So. It's all those... All those cigarettes. Not good for your kids. What we discover is that the broadcaster... Well, we'll get to what the broadcasters are used for primarily, but there is, in the ruins of Canterlot, a ghoul city mm -hmm. called Stable City. Stable City. Yeah. Name taken from Vault City. However, it is not similar to Vault City. It is actually similar to Underworld. Underworld. From Fallout 3. On the mall. As On the were. mall. In the mm -hmm. Museum of Natural Sciences. Mm-hmm. 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 So. Complete with Cerberus, because the fir one of the first things she sees is a uh, is a robot who is both happy and loathing his position, <laughs> having to be near all these ghouls constantly. Yeah. Uh, the, the insult comic robot, as it were. Yeah. So, what else? So, uh, we find out that this uh, stable city is the remainder of of the stable mm -hmm. that, that was underneath Canterlot. Stable one. Stable one. Which was supposed to house the goddesses and their family and the, the pretty elites. much all of the elites. Yeah. All of the uh, all the governmental figures and political what's it's um so yeah that's that's stable city. Interesting place, interesting setting. Um but the first thing that uh one of the first things that uh Little Pip does is she comes across Calamity. Um, all of her friends who are kind of recovering from being bombarded with these broadcasters. We should say that they were saved. They were rescued by the Canterlot ghouls. Yeah, who recognized them as not being evil. Basically, they said, anyone who the goddesses would hate that much mm -hmm. has got to be <laughs> good. Or at least worth the benefit of the doubt. Patton, in World War II, when he saved the... Uh, um, we saved the U.S. commander. I can't remember what city it was in. Um, the U.S. Uh, the Germans had surrounded the town and told the U.S. commander to surrender, or they they would just completely obliterate the, their forces. And the uh, the sole response from the U.S. commander was "fuck you." <laughs> and uh, Patton said, "We must turn around and save him because a man that eloquent must be saved." <laughs> it's brilliant. It's there brilliant. you go. Uh, but anyway, so Calamity has a conversation with Little Pip, uh, essentially about like, listen, I, I know you're struggling with what's going on. Mm -hmm. You're trying to put forward a good face. But, you know, he, he talked to her about the Pip Buck being fused to her arm as 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 a loss. And Little Pip's like, well, I, I'm, I more or less think of it as something I've gained. And he's like, don't give me that bullshit. And the thing is, Little Pip even knows it inside. She's just not wanting to think about it. Yeah, compartmentalizing it. Yeah, bottling it up and just and she kind of she kind of turns it back on calamity with with his own struggles the, with the things that he's seen with the things that he's done. She kind of confronts him and finds out that one the two things that have stuck out in his mind were the massacre at Arbu, the massacre of the bandits at the, at Arbu, mm -hmm. um, but also 
uh, the um, oh, Buckland Cross. Buckland Cross. Thank you. The fight with the Brotherhoof. Where he, where he's like, how are we any better than Raiders if we're just going to take in, from them? Yeah, take from them. We didn't give them an option. There was and no Pip, option. And Pip is trying to say, well, but it's com- it's completely different. Uh, you know, we ostensibly went there to trade and they're the ones who reneged on the deal. They're the ones who put their elder at risk mm. in all of this. Yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, you, you are going to have to find some kind of context with the scenario, because to be fair, they were an awful faction who had done her wrong by some of the personnel at Buckland Cross being involved with the Stable 2 rating. Right. So, yes, I mean, she's well within her right to have a bone to pick with these people. Let her have the bone to pick, Calamity. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she's pissed off. She has a reason. Not but a right, remember, but a reason. We don't necessarily understand Calamity's code, but his code is his own, and it's something that he stands by. It's difficult for the stable yeah. dwellers, and it's difficult for us um, to look at it and to understand. Um, yeah, we touched, that on that, we touched on this before, um, dealing partially with that Calamity has to kind of rationalize his existence right. because he sacrificed his life in the clouds for um, these these ponies below. Lowly, lowly earth ponies. Yeah, but the thing is, is he has to kind of accept that all of them can be saved or else he'll start having that 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 really nihilistic encroachment in his psyche that'll say so you're saying, maybe they don't all need to be saved right, you're saying and then he needs to accept that they can't all be saved they can't all be saved because the problem is if he accepts that it's going to start encroaching on maybe they shouldn't be it's the it's like the story of the starfish in the beach you know picking up the starfish yeah. and tossing them back in the ocean and there's thousands of starfish on starfish on the beach and it's you cannot possibly save them all but calamity's argument of course would be but i can save the ones that i tossed back yeah his, his and I can't make them any worse. I can't make it any worse for the other ones by stomping on them. The the loss of hope and spirit is something that we see as kind of a theme in this story. The struggling with that uh, insurmountable challenge. Yeah, just being able to try and and, and overcome, and, and especially the PTSD that's wrapped up in so many of these scenarios. Because there's always going to be some kind of after effect to whatever you go through, and this is something that a lot of stories don't bother touching with. Is the psychology of the person left after the fact where they will be survivor's guilt. Yeah. Survivor's guilt. Um, as you said, PTSD, just having to go through a very difficult Pip, time. Pip in a lot of ways feels privileged for having lived in the stable. Oh yeah. She had no choice about that. Uh, yeah. We are, we are, but a constant, we have no choice when and where we're born. Yeah. But I mean, so. regardless, it doesn't change the fact that she was, and now she's not, but she's also understands what it means. So, um, another thing, let's see here, Uh, the notes are a little bit out of order, but that's all right. So essentially Pip and Calamity go bartering, bartering away. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, turns out that Calamity's not bad when it comes to bartering. Uh, he knows when he knows what he wants, when he knows what he wants. Yeah. I mean, Velvet is more of a, like, she will look at everything and start doing this whole mental calculation in her head. It's like okay, that what scene can we in The Beautiful everything? Mind when he's doing the grease pin on the yeah. glass. Yeah. All those numbers rushing past her face. Yeah, it's it's like that, but it just comes down to, he's just, if he knows what he wants, he's a hunter. He's going to get it, and he's going to find whatever route he can take to get it, mm-hmm. um, which is where also where we meet a... Uh, a small cult, but a very old cult, a very old cult, um, who was obviously a Canterlot ghoul. He was. But interestingly enough, with his story, he lived in a stable, but it was uh, was it stable, stable three? three, stable three. The problem with the pink fog is that it we find out it collects underneath the ground and mm-hmm. concentrates. Yeah. And so it didn't matter that they were in a stable. It seeped in and yeah. turned them. He said it either killed you or actually he refers to becoming a ghoul as being killed yeah he refers to it as death i mean Um, there is a certain transcendence a boundary you cross over with that yeah uh to be certain you're no longer human you kind of become something else but anyways he well equine right he he realizes a people as it were he realizes that uh you know he and his he was with his parents and then they came to stable city uh, but his parents were murdered by alicorns. Yeah. 
So um, now there were two merchants, right? Two that we deal with. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, because there was the first one that Calamity got the magical missiles from. Yeah, because it's supposed to be, I think, the... Um, he, the... Tra- he traded his magic rifle for eight. Yeah. Or six. And... No, six. He wanted six. And then there were the, the missiles, and then there was the... Um... But the Colt was the second vendor. He was a guns and ammo specifically vendor. Yes, and he and Calamity had to uh, repair the ammo vending machine <clears throat> so that it would for actually just... discount. For a ten percent discount, of course, uh, and just so that it would, he, uh, he could get it working, and that's when uh, Little Pip and the Colt have a little bit of a chance to talk about the history yeah, of she, Stable she, City. She pries, and he even asks. He says, "Are are all of you?" Um, he calls them breathers, right? Yeah, breathers. Are all of you breathers this nosy? And she says, "Yes, yes, we are." Yes. Uh-huh. Continue. And so, yeah, listen, I'm the first non ghoul you've talked to in over a hundred years. Do you have any cursory interest in what's going on here? <laughs> I'm kind of interested in talking to you. So yeah, he's a little he's a little uh, he's a little bit of a dick. Yeah. But I mean, if you were you stuck in a too. child's body for 120 years with a child's mind. Yeah. It kind of grows weirdly. Yeah. No puberty. Yeah. It's kind of strange. Kinda, uh, but anyways, uh, so what she finds out is that uh, he mentions that the pink fog is living that it eats you yes that it's breathing that it's breathing now i have to say the minute he said it's breathing i immediately knew what was going on Mm. so and we'll get to that in a minute but it's literally the next thing yeah but anyways well calamity suggests that what occurred is you know with these mega spells they have to be connected to some pre-existing magics yeah, and his theory is that the dragon underneath Canterlot, which guards the treasury, as it were, or the treasure hoard, whatever they call it, you know, the royal treasure hoard. Yep. There's a dragon underneath Canterlot, and he believes that the the mega spell actually um, that was that was set off essentially with the mega spell is a talisman that ex- just exudes pink fog, right? Yeah, uh, and so. But it, it's his theory is that the, those those talismans are embedded with tons of jewels. Mm-hmm. And he believes that the hungry dragon consumed the pink fog talisman, the mega spell talisman, whatever you want to call it. And became one with and that became one with it and, and literally has become fused to the treasures. But that essentially what it is, is this dragon has been asleep for 120 years, exhaling pink fog. Yeah. So if you thought Mr. Topaz was bad, imagine a giant pink dragon permanently fused to a pile of gold spewing pink fog for over 100 years not okay. great and quite frankly no. i don't i don't i don't necessarily like i don't obviously we'll find out how that that's going to take you taken care of or not taken care of but it's like that's not good mm-hmm. that's very bad it is so uh but that's his theory uh anyways now i assume did did, did the dragon that guards the treasure hoard is that from the show no um no there isn't that so this is so it's not something that you as a my little pony fan could have necessarily guessed mm, no no I mean, I had, but they did link it back to the show and something we've talked about before um when it came to um little pip says oh that's why they have the escape tunnel between the school and the vaults underneath Candlelot. yeah and they're like, why? And it's like, well, to get the dragon's eggs. Right. Well, they pre- they suppose that there is an a- there was an agreement, an accord yeah. reached um, between uh, Celestia and mm-hmm. this dragon. Basically, that uh, I will allow you to guard the greatest hoard of treasure this country has ever seen, which, of course, <laughs> any dragon would be like, I'm listening in exchange for her babies, mm-hmm. for her dragon eggs. I think I'm which about... i guess means that spike is her son yeah that's what i was getting at um family reunion <laughs> mama give us a hug oh. <laughs> kill it with fire kill it with fire <laughs> <laughs> so anyway uh, moving on um we actually get to the stable proper we get to the stable proper. So the stable is within the city. They built the city on the outside of the stable, but within the ministry. Yes. Um, but on the inside, they listen to some music and um, they kind of just 
kind of relax for a while say, before before being met by steel hooves right but we should describe the music a little bit because it's it was described as being played from a crystal harp and a crystal harmonica yes um and that it was haunting and unnerving that thing uh, we'll show you at the end we actually have a treat um so you want to include the clip yeah okay we'll include that at the end of the show exactly so that's why I was moving on. Yes. Steel Hooves uh, comes and gets uh, uh, the party and or Little Pip and says, follow me. Yeah. Um, Little Pip's like, what are you talking? What's going on? He says nothing. What, where are you taking me? He says nothing. nothing. Well, I mean, he doesn't say much to begin with. So this is kind of like a base level for Steel Hooves. But he's but he's he's very directly ignoring her. Yes. Um, but while uh, in route to their destination, she hears one of the audio logs from Scootaloo regarding stable one yep and scootaloo had made a fail safe on the stable to fuck over and i do mean fuck over everyone yep. inside that it, the doors would not unseal until everyone inside was dead. she would protect them forever forever she would not harm them she would make sure that nothing here would happen to them but they could never get out never get out and she even says and if one of the goddesses is in, is in there this is going to be a long time yes because theoretically they live you know, forever. Yes. Unfortunately, things didn't happen according to plan. Well, they the ran out second. of food, right? They did run out of food, but they were also <sighs> ghoulified, which means they were dead. And as soon as they were dead, vaults open. Vaults open, yeah. Which is an interesting kind of Now, we should also state that the ministry building itself was itself sealed like a vault. So this was kind mm -hmm. of a vault within a vault. Um, but it within the ministry, there were no there were very few rations and supplies. So it was basically an option of do you want to starve to death inside the ministry or do you want to, you know, eventually die inside the stable? But a lot of ponies didn't even have the chance to get into the stable. They closed the doors early. Yeah, because they were a bunch of pusses who were yeah. like, oh, no, but what about me? And so they locked everyone out. Yeah, so not great. But essentially what it is is Scootaloo's mentality behind it is that you have ruined us yeah it you're was the ones your who decisions. drove us to this war i will you know, like you said i will protect you but you this will be your coffin yeah you will die it's your prison yeah congratulations yeah so it's pretty heavy stuff yeah pretty very heavy very stuff. very dark so anyways steel hooves leads pip and we get to meet uh, a, a very aged character uh, who's now ghoulified but was aged at the time she was ghoulified and in fact, she is, due to the pink fog, completely um, welded to her, 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 her wheelchair. She's bonded to a wheelchair. Yep. She cannot move her legs nor her arms. But she's a unicorn, so she she's can unicorn, use her magic so can to, move to the, uh, you know, manipulate, manipulate the things. world. Yeah. Now, her large, the large wheels of the wheelchair are mobile, but the small ones are completely seized. That's just a minor detail. But, yeah. Um, but we find out that this particular pony... Uh, or mayor, I guess, mm -hmm. is Twilight Sparkle's mother. Star Sparkle, right? Star Sparkle. And we get a hint at it because he refers to her as... Um, sp How does he refer to her? Does he say Sparkle? Yeah, Miss Sparkle. Star Spark or something Star, like Star that. Sparkle or something. I think it is Star Sparkle because I actually looked it up because I was like, hold on, because there are... I guess on top of this, two uh, two other names or two official canon names for right. her. Okay. And one is Miss Sparkle, which was used in one of the episodes. And then the other one is Twilight Velvet. Twilight Velvet? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, I think I think it's because nobody kind of knew really early on, even the people who are making the show, how to handle surnames mm. in a universe where some people just don't have them. And even... I mean, there are some uh, families that actually do share a surname, an official surname. Um, they're the uh, there's let's see, what was his name? Filthy Rich and uh, just uh, there, there's the rich family. So it's like Filthy well, Rich. When you think about all of Applejack's family, they have Apple in their name. But then her boyfriend is also Apple Snack and well, not, not related and not related. But uh, they're all Thank they're God. all Apple based, but it's not right. technically a surname. <laughs> Like a lot of graphic design, it's Apple based. Yes. <laughs> uh, but anyways, so we meet Mrs. Sparkle and we also find out that she is an outcast. She is completely shunned. She is within the confines and the protection of the city, um, but she has no contact with the rest of, She's of a pariah. the city. She's a social pariah. Due to her connection to Twilight, Twilight Sparkle, Sparkle and the perceived connection to the Alicorns, mm -hmm. which are slowly killing off um, 
many of the inhabitants yes of the city but we should also mention that we find out that the broadcasters are actually a tool that are used by the ghouls because it doesn't affect the ghouls right to keep the alicorns at bay yeah, they are immune to it and so they just keep them away at magic we also we also find out from the broadcasters that they have a switch that you can just turn them off and yeah. then all this time that little pip's been trying to blow them up there's an off switch that you just can flick. Yeah. So she she finally studies a broadcaster and looks at it and makes sure she has it to memory. So the next time she can just look at it and flick the switch. Yes. Manipulate it with her magics. And she's like, I am not a clever pony. I am the dumbest pony. <laughs> of course, it has an on and off switch. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah, well, you'd have to get up and close and personal to one to find it. Yeah. And that's kind of difficult Pip, in this environment. Pip didn't roll super high on intelligence. Mm, yeah. Yeah, not particularly. In some ways. Or maybe she's got such like a high autistic intelligence that she can't figure out like basic things. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe, maybe, maybe it's just a plot convenience. That is also very possible, uh, yeah. which which every time they get trapped in my mind, I'm like, well, who saved them this time? It's yeah. kind of my feelings. Like the last time little Pip had a gun to her head and then a griffin shows up and it's dead. You know what I mean? And a lot yeah. of a lot of that kind of stuff happens. Um, but anyways, so the uh, Steel Hooves had brought uh, Star Sparkle a gift of books, books for her to read, because she said if she had to read the same damn book over one more time, she'd kill herself. Yeah, because <laughs> she has no one to talk to. And and you can tell throughout this that the relationship between the two is very strong. Very, very strong. They know each other very well. Right, but it, it makes you wonder, did, Steelhoofs didn't know there was a city inside of Canterlot. He didn't know that there were still ghouls living in Canterlot. Nope. So he just happened to cross her. Yeah, uh, or was informed, probably off screen. Maybe. Um, well, the other thing is, with the ghouls, here's a pocket of people who are just as old as he is. Yep. Now, some of them technically are descendants of stable dwellers. Yeah. So they're not as old as he is, but close enough. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, as well, um, the reference of if I have to read the same book one more goddamn time, I'll blow my uh, I'll blow my own brains out. Yeah. Um, just could be a reference to even before the bombs fell. Yeah. Just a relationship that they had. Yeah. The other thing is Calamity is quite not a Calamity. Steelhoves is quite insistent that they take Star Sparkle with them. Mm -hmm. And Pip is like to where to Pleasant Valley, to a splendid valley. Sorry, to you know to fight the goddess like what are we going to do with her and he's like we'll we'll take her to ten pony tower and she's like do you think they're gonna take a ghoul and he's like yes they'll take her right because she, the cult of twilight yeah essentially it's like we want all of twilight's relic oh my god it's, it's her, her mother, mother. <laughs> we can make another twilight <laughs> I don't know what that would do they to start, the DNA. They start, like, peeling off pieces of her and make a Twilight doll. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And then Smarty they use, pants. Then they use the black book to bring her back. <laughs> this sounds more and more like we're delving into things that should never have happened. Um, <laughs> and then but, the but, tentacles come out. <laughs> Pip says, okay, afterwards, yeah, we, we really come have back. to... And it's like, okay, now we're planning to come back to Canterlot. Yeah, because they know they're surrounded by alicorns. Yeah, like they're like we, we <laughs> they gotta, didn't get rid of those. Yeah, we, it's like we got it. We got to handle this first before we start making all plans. these freaking side quests. Actually, she says at the beginning of the chapter. Yeah, not at the beginning, but it, it's somewhere in the in the middle of the chapter. Um, oh, where is it? I actually wrote After it down. After Cantalot, we go right to Splendid Valley. No more delays. No, no more, more side, side quests. quests. <laughs> no more distractions. <laughs> The whole the, the whole gamification of the story. It's oh, yeah. Nice, that, that one little line there. That was really funny. Keeps reeling it back in. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. We're playing the game. That's right. So anyways, uh, the way the chapter ends is we get into a memory orb from the perspective of Pinkie Pie. Mm -hmm. Immediately following the embarrassment at the party when she is outed as being a drug addict. Mm -hmm. When Twilight essentially confronts her. And uh, we are from the perspective of Pinkie Pie in the memory orb. And Pinkie Pie is high as a freaking kite. Um, and so she is uh, she's literally hallucinating. Oh, yeah. The the potted plant is talking to her in mm -hmm. the tone of a zebra like they don't understand you. Uh, yeah. Again, that was crazed ramblings inflection. I don't know if it's anything like that in the story. But uh, it's nice that he used some different but familiar voices. So it kind of yes. sounds like Zakora. This is actually from the episode Party of One, mm -hmm. um, which is actually 
what we kind of touched on in the when we did the Halloween episode cupcakes. Mm-hmm. It was based on her actions then when she could no longer handle the idea that her friends didn't want to hang out with her. She kind of lost her mind and then decided to have a party with a whole bunch of inanimate objects. But she voiced and moved the objects as separate individuals, yeah. but put this kind of like inflection in her voice to change who they were. Mm-hmm. Um, it was all it was all very strange. Very anyways, well done in the show. All of very the strange. things are talking to her like your friends don't understand you. Yes, we're perfectly fine. You know, don't let them tear you down. Uh, and she finds she has a gift mm-hmm. on her wall. It's a gift from Rarity. And of course, a gift from Rarity. What would it be other than uh, uh, it's a mirror? A mirror. A very special mirror. Interesting mirror. So Pinkie Pie is looking at herself in the mirror with Pip looking at Pinkie Pie in the mirror. Her hair is not curly at all. It's 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 straight and sagging. She's mm-hmm. sullen. Her eyes are sunken in. She looks like a meth head. She just looks like a mess. Yeah. She looks like somebody who's been partying hard for a long Pinkamina time. Pinkamina Diane Pie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, so Pinkie Pie calls whatever her assistant at the ministry and says, get this mirror out of here. And they're like, what should we do with it? And it's like, I don't care. Just get it out of here. Take it to the oh, fun take farm. It, take it to the fun farm. That's right. Take it to the, take fun, it to the farm. fun farm. And so she reaches up to the mirror herself. And when she makes contact with the mirror, her image transforms. And the version of herself staring back at her is of her true self. Mm-hmm. Pert, happy. Takes and... a snapshot of your soul and then projects it back to you. Right. And uh, this Pinkie Pie is uh, very supportive, but it starts talking to her. Mm -hmm. Um, And more importantly, when little Pip starts talking to little Pip watching the memory orb. Right. At which point this is no surprises. No, 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 um, not surprises. No spoilers. No spoilers, little Pip. No spoilers. And the thing is, little Pip's reaction is. This is really weird. I feel like the more appropriate reaction is to just scream as loud as you can in your own mind. Well, remember, because Pinkie Pie has this weird tacit connection to omniscience. Omniscience. Yeah. Like she kind of phases into and out of. That's why she takes the party time mental. Pinkie Pie is a quantum state pony, essentially. Yes. (laughs) But anyways, it's just really funny because the reflection will even is saying to Pinkie, um, that uh you know we need to record this memory for little pip Mm -hmm. little pip doesn't like what you've done to yourself or whatever you know something to that effect and then little pip is like oh my god i'm literally talking to her in the past this isn't just a memory orb i'm connected to the past i i need to tell her to stop i need to tell her that things aren't gonna be okay nope 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 not hearing it the memory the memory is trying to get pinky to buck (laughs) buck the um the drugs Mm -hmm. and so says everything's gonna be fine but we have to dismantle the ministry we have to tear it down piece by piece Mm -hmm. So we have to break the conditioning. <laughs> I don't I don't think her her mirror image, <laughs> true soul self is Alex Jones. Call me crazy. I just I don't I don't think that's the case. <laughs> we got to stop the zebras at four stars. But anyways, uh, so uh, to put it into perspective, uh, Pinkie Pie uh, says, but they gave me this mirror. They don't really care about me. Or, 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 there was something else about they don't really care about me but essentially what it boils down to the mirror says you mean like a practical joke see they really do still care about you pinky pie yeah um pinky pie of course likes to pull practical jokes on people yeah and everything will end in sunshine and rainbows as long as you're willing to face the fire Ominous. and little pip is like there are no sunshine and rainbows. Do you see what the way wa- you know what uh-huh. the wasteland is? No spoilers. What she says is sunshine and, and rainbows. rainbows. <laughs> so. I think we've reached that interval in the show, the common thing that we do every week. Oh, that thing. Yeah, the, the thing that you enjoy the most. It's your favorite segment of the show. I'm speaking, of course. Of the Pony Pot of the Week! Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, the Pony Pun of the Week. He hadn't read it before, is, and now he did. Is. <laughs> the Pony Pun is <laughs> Mare of the Horse That Bit You. <laughs> the Mare of the Horse That Bit You. <laughs> That's that is too much. That is far too much. 
Uh, for those who don't know, it's a takeoff of the hair of the dog, the dog that, that bit, bit you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Which is essentially having a shot of some kind of whiskey the morning after a night of drinking. Yeah, pretty much pretty much you're hungover. Best way to stop the hangover is drink more. more. Yeah. It's it's the way your body we don't have to get into the science behind that, but it's just the way your body processes alcohol. Yeah. It, it gives it more ready access alcohol to break down. Yeah. The easy stuff, not the hard stuff. Yeah. So your body's like, oh, I'll take the easy stuff again. And so you kind of lighten up a little bit. Yeah. Just staving off the eventual dehydration and, and headache that is still too insane. Yeah. So and uh, we would go into our listener question segment, but y'all didn't have any questions. Well, technically, so. KCAT did have one question, but you answered it. In which was comments. which was if um, if you had actually read forward on the chapter names and you had not. Speaking of Alex Jones, she's like, he knew too much. <laughs> How much did he know and when did he know it? And then she uh, are you now or have you ever been a member of the pony party? Well, of course, after you said that, she decided to become the father from Shinji getting the goddamn mech simulator. <laughs> which is the only appropriate title for that show. <laughs> You have to uh, elaborate for some of our. She did the makes temple fingers and goes, hmm, excellent. (laughs) It's like, okay, so you're being Evangelion guy. Oh, it's too much. It's just too much. So if you enjoy the show, please give us a like. If uh, you're watching us and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Do consider downloading. If you are watching us, downloading the podcast on the foliofman.libsyn.com. You can also find us through the Google Play and iTunes podcast stores, respectively. Um, if you are listening to us and you'd like to watch the video and check out some of our other video content, please find us at youtube.com slash Crisco Brand Biscuits. Funny name, but, you know, we're funny guys, so it works out, right? I'm funny looking, even. You said it, not me, but your lips <laughs> to God's ears. Um, if you are on Twitter and you'd like to follow us, we are at crisco cast uh is there anything oh yes and of course if you would like to email us uh you can email us at cbpbch at gmail.com what's that chris cbpbch at gmail.com there you go um do you consider oh I was going to say, if you decide to have a uh, to uh, show your friends and they're really not interested, remember that you can actually use cable as thin as a parachute cord <laughs> to actually tie them to a chair. Remember not to go ah, too the thin. The Ludovico technique. As it were. <laughs> uh, remember not to go too thin when wrapping around the wrists because that lacerate can sometimes it. yeah lacerate it and they could bleed out. And, and you don't want to have to explain to the police that they bled out while trying to watch our show. Better, we don't want that. Better to have kidnapping on your wrap than attempted murder or murder. Well, yeah, you know, or murder. Yeah, so, so you know, you don't, you don't, you don't want that. If you do like our stuff, please consider checking out some of our other content. We do lots of let's plays. We do some funny videos. We have another podcast called the Random Frequency po- Random lots Frequency Podcast. Of let's plays. Um, well, <laughs> we have like a hundred videos or over hundred videos on the channel. Um, check out uh, the Random Frequency Podcast, which is where we kind of talk about pop culture, music, news, anything geeky stuff, whatever's on our mind, just things that aren't ponies. Uh, there is a moratorium on ponies on the Random Frequency Podcast. He didn't tell me that beforehand. <laughs> it, they'll sneak in there anyways. Um, and we also have on the channel a new sports podcast. So if you like sports, check it out. If not, who cares? It's there. So you can engage with it or not. So I'm not going to speak for Chris this week, but for myself... Wait for yourself. I'm supposed to answer. You're supposed to say and and you because you were tired of me speaking for you at the end of the show. No, no, no. You say for yourself, you're Robert. For me, I'm Chris. Yeah. For myself, I'm Robert. And for me, I'm Chris. And this has been the Folly of Man. Yes. We'll see you next week. I mean, probably. Most likely. I don't think a nuclear bomb is going to take us out. But if it does, you know. You'll have preparatory training from watching these videos. <laughs> <laughs> a survival guide for the end of the world. <laughs> I don't know how it's been, so have a good one. It's all over, but the cry.